Yo, today I'll be making an updated guide on how to zap beats. So, um, I already made some similar to this. It was uh, how or a beat breakdown or something like that, but I don't think I sound anything alike what I did back then. So I'm just gonna be making an updated guide and let's get this going. So this is gonna be a step-by-step -step guide um, from start to finish on how I make a track. So the first thing I do is I dig for samples. As soon as I find that the sample I like, or just something that sounds interesting, I just download it and throw it straight on, straight on FL. So I found this on uh, Andre Navarro 2. So this is a pretty good channel. They just uploaded it today. And uh, I think it sounds pretty good. Yeah, so <clears throat> if you've been following my SoundCloud, you know that I like to use a lot of saxophones. So as soon as I hear a saxophone, I immediately download it and try to figure something out. So the first thing I do when I go on FL is throw the drag the sample in here on the workspace. And then I go in my mixer into the master. So I know I'm going to get roasted in the comments for this, but I this this is all I do for mastering. Or mixing I put a soft clipper oops, and just leave it default that's all I put on my master mix I like to keep things simple when it comes to my master and it's been working out for me so I guess I'll just keep doing it that way so and then you double click on your sample right click and edit <clears throat> and this is where I like to skim through so I always start at the beginning So I'm not sure if I'm going to use the start here, but I'm definitely going to use the saxophone. So I like to take the best four bar loop I can. And then if when I dr add the drums to it, it sounds good. Then I'll add different parts of the sample. So right here is where it starts. And that's your loop right there. So I'm gonna drag that in here. And I have my eight bar loop actually. And I use this little time knob here. And it's gonna lock on each bar. So I'm gonna lock on the nine over there because it's an eight bar loop. So then I use a metronome to make sure everything's on beat. And, and then I left click it once and then I open up my mixer again and on the insert one you left click it and do control L so that's gonna um, that's gonna assign this insert to the sample um, I like to go down all the way to 109 BPM when I make this slow slow funk type of beat. If you've noticed on my SoundCloud, I like to have two uh, major types of beats. So the first one is slow and hard hitting beats. So that tends to be around 109 BPM. Or I'll make super fast and happy beats. Um, so that would tend to be around uh, 160 and 170 BPM. But um, sometimes I go in the middle, but that's pretty rare. All right, so the next thing you're gonna do is go back on the insert in the mixer and in slot one, add a paramedic EQ. All right, so now you're gonna take the second button here. You're gonna drag it all the way down. And then these dots over here, you're gonna drag it all the way down also. So this is what it's gonna look like. And then um, you're gonna, above those dots, there's this little shape. You're gonna drag it until you find this shape right this shape here so now this is what your eq looks like so now you're going to take the bottom uh bottom dial and turn it up until it looks flat with everything else and now you can change the frequency until you're around um 250 
So 250 is good to take out all the low end from the sample. So this is usually what my EQ looks like. So the reason I do that is uh, to remove the low end from the sample so that our bass doesn't get muddy when once we add it. For the volume of my sample, I like to um, I like to go between this little range here, these two slots. So it seems like the sample goes lower and lower the more it goes on. So a fix to do that is changing uh, in. So until it's all it all looks the same. So now everything should be the same volume. Alright, so that's pretty much it for the sample. Well actually I like to add a reverb sometimes. So if you add a reverb too. And I turn up the wetness a bit. That's basically it. So now we can go over to the drums. So some kits I like to use are um, my Volume 3 kit and uh, probably the Evil Akai kit. Those are the two ones that I like to use. Alright, so we're going to start with a snare. If we go in my Volume 3 kit, we can find a lot of different snares that are already uh, stacked and sound really unique. This snare right here from my volume 2 kit. Next will be the 808 sample. So in my volume 3 kit I have the fat 808. I always use this one. So drag it at the top and for the kick I go in the Aseri drum kit and I pick out the fourth one. And if it doesn't sound hard or like hard hitting uh, from just selecting it from here, we're going to um, turn it up a lot and the saw clip around the master is going to fix our issue. And then I just go for the hi-hat. So that's usually this one here. The slide hat. And then I just drag out here to extend the pattern right click it like fill each two step so that's the base uh hi-hat pattern that i go with and then for the snares i right click it fill each eight step delete every first and third one so first one third just like that <clears throat> and then for the kick i like to go with the sample so i'm gonna be repeating uh the loop until I just find something that sounds nice. All right. And, and then I select just the kick pattern. I do control C and I left click the 808 pattern, just this little square here and control V. So now we have the same pattern of kick for the 808, but we haven't set up our 808 yet. So you're going to go in the 808, go on the last uh, section here, cut self, second section, remove everything except hold. So it looks like this. And then over here, uh, make sure it's not, uh, the time isn't up. So you just right click and click none. So now it sounds like this. Okay, don't worry if it sounds garbage right now. So you're gonna double left click um, an empty one. So now everything's gonna be selected. And now you're gonna go in your mixer, S click on the second insert and do control shift L this time. So now it's gonna um, paste everything in from the top to the bottom. So to level my snare i usually turn it up so it's the same level as the um as this sample or the melody and also i'll add a little bit of low end to it all 
and the hat, I like to keep it just below the snare. And this one can be this one can be weird at first, but you're gonna want to make the kick peak. So I usually just turn it up to max, and if it that's still not loud enough, I add an EQ and I turn it even more here. Like this is the volume, so I turn it up to like six. And I'll add some low end in there. Too. And this is something I've been doing recently, but I like to turn on my 808 a lot, so at three. J but you don't want the 808 to peak. You never want it to peak unless you're doing like a Shamina type beat. So this is what it sounds like. And the next thing we're going to do is find the key of the sample. So in the description, there's going to be um, <clears throat> a software that I found called Keyfinder. And there will also be some scales. So if you don't know any music theory, like I didn't, I had no idea what anything about music, music theory when I started making beats, but I just uh, constantly worked with it and keys and scales and stuff and it's really easy actually so you're going to download the software in the description and this is what it's going to look like so you're going to want to mute your beat or your drums you're going to highlight your eight bar loop of the sample and then render it No, you don't have to worry about naming, naming it or anything. So next you just have to drag in the, the sample that you just rendered into Keyfinder. And this is what it's going to look like. You just click Run Batch Analysis. So it shows that it's a B-flat minor. So now you're going to go back in FL. You're going to open your um, pattern. And you're going to press this plus button and add a sampler. So you open the piano roll on the sampler and click file open score. So now you're going to go in the scales folder that I put in the description. So you're going to match what Keyfinder told you it was. So B flat minor and go in here, B flat minor, open. And now you can go in right click piano roll for your bass and do control L so that it stretches everything out and you can stretch the last one and now everything on these lines here are going to be on beat or on in key now that you have your base set up um, you can go back on your workspace and left click this little arrow here on pattern one and split by channel and you can just drag everything out so now all your sounds are going to be separated into their own their own channel and the next thing i do is i extend the bass and the kick to the same length as the sample so now i just listen and i match it with the sample All right, so now that you have your kick and bass all down, uh, you can make some crazy hi-hat patterns. So if you go in your hi-hat pattern, um, you can change this little magnet here. And I like to go one six beat a lot. So this is what I, I usually make. So 
So my next video is going to be on how to isolate vocals, but for now I'm just going to download this and do it really quick. Alright, so that's basically it for um, how I make beats. So if you um, look at some previous tutorials, you can see how I structure my intros and stuff. So that really hasn't changed. Um, there's always just this transition in the middle. So that's basically it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Stop.